Okay colleagues, I just wanted to do a quick little video here to show you how to get into Qualtrics and um, if you wanted to access it to create some surveys for your own research or um, Tom in your case if you wanted to do the survey for the faculty search. Um, what we have here is basically just the basic login screen so you'll see that I've gone to Qualtrics dot com and it brings me up to this particular page now I'm going to go and click on the login button up in the top right hand corner and I get this particular page the username for the department is my email address so you'll see it's barbara m21 at sacredheart.edu the password is the one that I emailed you and it is the same one and while this is in my name, I've always presented this to Jim and the college as a departmental account. So this is one that I fully expect that everyone in the department would be using if they wanted to um, create these kinds of, of surveys. So I put in that information and I click sign in. And it's going to take a second. And it'll come in and it'll automatically bring up um, it'll have this little information here and this will vary depending upon what surveys are currently open and when they're on the go. Um, but you can see here down on the bottom a list of all of the surveys that either I've created or that have been shared with me by somebody else. So this is a complete listing. Now if you want to create your own surveys what you would do is you would the easiest way is to go up here and click this create survey button so I'm just gonna click this and it'll give me these three options now if there's a survey that's already there that you want to use that is similar to the one that you're currently using for example Tom if you wanted to create a survey that would mimic the uh, faculty search process we have ones of those in there from previous years so you can create from a copy so if you clicked here it would actually ask you which survey you wanted to copy so if we were to go down here under searches you can see here's all the searches that we've done surveys for in the past so if you wanted to use one of these as a model you could now I'm actually going to cancel out of this because I'm just going to go into the quick survey builder which basically is a dummy or uh, creates it from sort of a, uh, a, a basic template or a, a blank template if you will so I'm just gonna create a survey called name and what you'll note that I've done is I've created a folder for each of you so that if you want to create surveys for yourself or for your own research or for your classes or anything like that you want to stick them in a folder so again I'm going to use Tom as the example here um, so if I wanted to create a uh, you know if I was Tom and I wanted to create a survey I would select my folder and then I just create survey and as you can see here now I'm going to get in a particular blank here and you know so here's where I would start um, obviously the first thing I'd want to do is I would create a new question now the automatic default is a three item multiple choice if I wanted to change that over here on the right hand side you can see multiple choice in green and there's a little pull down arrow right next to it so if I were to click on that it gives me all of these other choices so I could actually just start off with some descriptive text where I go through and give them maybe instructions I could set it up as a matrix table and you can see an example over here as I scroll over each one on the left hand side in kind of a watermarked feature you can see an example of it so if you had multiple items that you wanted to ask about in terms of say a Likert scale uh, similar to the one you see here uh, a matrix table is quite in, is quite useful if you wanted just an open-ended question you could use the text entry if you wanted one where they would rank order something um, you know you have that item and there's some other ones here but in all honesty I think the th ones that will likely use the most are the multiple choice the matrix table or the open-ended question in some cases we may use a rank order 
Um, obviously, descriptive text would be one as well. So I'll start off with that. And so here's what we get, descriptive text. And if you click over here, it automatically, you know, gives you a default. So right now the default is click to write the te question text. And if I were to click on that, it gives me an editor. Now this is just the normal editor that I get. If I want to get things where I wanted to bold it or italicize it or anything like that, I can click on rich content editor and it gives me a full word like editor here. Um, now I tend not to use that. I tend to just go in here and type in, please respond to each question. And so that's the text that I've given them. Whoops. Thank you. So that's the text that they've got. And if I'm going to create another question, I'm going to click here. And you'll notice that it actually, when I was going through, as soon as I typed in a lot, it changed from three to four because it um, uh, was essentially intuitively thinking about what I was going to write. So it was automatically giving me um, possible options there. Um, now I'm just going to go back to three. So I went over here and I just hit the minus sign to go back to three. If I wanted more, I would just click on the plus sign. So see, I can add a f another one and another one here. I'm going to get, let me scroll down so you can see those. I'm going to go and get rid of them again. Um, you know, so that's basically how you would go about it. And that's sort of a quick and dirty way of looking at how you would essentially create a survey. Now if you want to launch it, so once you're ready to do it and you want to distribute it, you would actually want to launch it. So you'd click on this little icon up here sort of in the middle of your screen that says launch survey and it's going to come up with a couple of ways of doing that. Um, the first thing you're going to need to do is activate it and essentially once you activate the survey that means that it is no longer available to you to make edits to it so you want to make sure it looks exactly like you want before you activate it as soon as you activate it you will get a link that you can use so you can see here now my survey is available and here's the link that it's available I can also send it out to people so one of the things that we've done in the past is we've actually pre-uploaded a number of panels into the group. Um, so if I wanted to email this out to say all of the faculty, um, I would go under this email survey and it'll give me some options. So under the two, you'll see that they've pre I've preloaded or we've got preloaded some panels in here. Now some of them aren't going to necessarily be a, applicable to you but like faculty and EDL obviously that needs to be updated because we've got several of our colleagues that have retired that are still listed there and I note Charles hasn't been added yet. Um, you know here is the entire faculty and again I imagine that probably needs to be updated to account for the retirements and uh, new additions that we've got in the past year. Uh, here's a staff one which I think is probably still accurate at this stage and so on. So you know we've got a number of ones and I suspect these three here be the ones that you'll be most interested in. So I'm just gonna pick EDL faculty right now. I'm not gonna send the message uh, but you can see I can select the entire faculty or I can select certain people within. I'm going to select the entire panel, which means all of the EDL faculty that are listed there. And you can see I can send it in an hour or I can send it immediately. Um, I'm going to say send in an hour. That way I can delete it before it goes out. Um, you could actually change who it gets sent from. So uh, not only who it gets sent from, but who it's responded to. So I could actually put in, you know, if I was Tom right now doing this, I could actually put that information in so that if people responded with questions it would actually be sent back to Tom as opposed to being sent back to me even though it's my account. Um, now what you'll see here in the actual message is this essentially is the Qualtrics code that would put in your specific 
um, survey in there. So essentially this number sign and all this stuff is the code that tells it to put in your particular survey link. Qualtrics requires that you also have an opt-out function um, and you can't remove that. It'll automatically put it back in or, or it won't let you send the message in order to uh, if you were to remove it. So if I wanted to add in some text here please complete my survey and then at the end here I can um, add in some other stuff thank you Tom um, and then all I would do is I would click send test email and whoops I forgot to put in a subject test survey so then I would send test email and so that's how I would send it out to people so that they could complete it if I didn't just send them the link that I showed you a couple of seconds ago. So if instead of, you know, I can just email people the link, the advantage of sending it by email if you know the population you're sending it to, so if you're sending it just to faculty or if you're sending it, you know, just to your class, you can add your class in as a panel and I'd be happy to show you how to do that um, individually if that's what you're interested in. Um, you can just send folks the link but by sending it as a panel what ends up happening is if you want it to send reminders it only sends it to the people that haven't completed it or haven't opted out. So if you know Tom was to send out that uh, email for this survey and say Charles had completed the survey but Randall and I and Daria hadn't and Mary um, you know, and, and Colette, we had So Charles was the only one that completed it. When Tom sends out the reminder, Charles isn't going to get a copy of that reminder. Only the five of us that haven't completed the survey will get the reminder. So that's one of the advantages of using the email survey function. Um, so that's all I'm going to put in this video. I'll create a second video now in a second that shows you how to download the results once you've got results available to you.